Howdy everyone! Welcome back to Alex Crossing. Today is kind of an interesting episode because we are going to be visiting the elusive click Crazy Red. Let's go ahead and check our mail first though. I had to move my mouse cursor over. What do we got? We got two letters and three presents. Mm. I wonder who the letters are from. Um, so yeah, Crazy Red is the guy who will be delivering us our, uh, or where we'd be most likely to get paintings and art from, but I never visited Crazy Red in the first game. Anyways, welcome to Animal Crossing, the stream where I play Animal Crossing almost every day until I beat it. That's my goal, and uh, feel free to tune in and enjoy it while I, you know, make my way towards that goal. Uh, if you enjoy this content, be sure to subscribe, leave a like down below, and uh, leave a comment as well, or as I like to call them, letters. Uh, I'll read you if there's if I like your letter, there's a chance I might read it live on stream, so that'll be fun. Anyway, let's check our mail. Got a letter, letter from the HRA, a letter from Tom Nook. Let's read the Tom Nook letter. Lovely lamp. Ooh, they might like that. Now let's throw this away. Throw this one away. Do, do, do. This one? From Red. Here we are, 6 p.m. on February 18th. So hopefully, he'll be here in town. Because all you. Oh, my controller died. That's a problem. Let's plug that in, shall we? Problem. I, gotta, I keep forgetting that when this thing has batteries in it and you plug it in, it doesn't recharge the batteries, which is. Should be rather obvious considering they're not they're non-rechargeable double A's, but that's just how it is for me. I forget these things. So where would Crazy Red's tent be? I'm thinking it would be down at the wishing well. That's usually where events happen and such. And I don't think I'll have enough money to actually you know what? Let's make a quick trip to the peach orchard to load up on peaches in order to sell and nooks real quick. In order to spend at Crazy Reds. Also, green trees. This is interesting. Uh, I don't know if they're always looking like this, or if this is just the change in scenery from the sun being sun going down, or if it actually like is starting to become springtime. I don't know. Time will tell, though. Let's go ahead and let's just head over to Nooks. I'm sure I'll find something along the way. <laughs> well, let's see if we got any new fossils in. I bet you it's all the same fossils. Stegosaurus tail, which I think we already have. Skull of a plesiosaur. And amber. I wonder if there's just not... I wonder if certain fossils just don't spawn in the winter. I've been thinking about that because we only need two, and with how often I play this game, you think I'd get it eventually, but it's really just been a uh, crapshoot up to this point. To do, what do we got? Present. Plesio skull. Open. Alright, cool. Nice. So let's go ahead and... I can sell these real quick to make the money I need in order to get Crazy Red, get those paintings. So without a doubt, we'll get something for the museum today. And hey, with any luck, uh, Noko will have something on sale too that I can donate, but that's a rarity, you know? Anywho. Uh, yeah, what have you guys been up to? I've been just hanging out with a girlfriend, watching movies. I watched Hercules for the first time today. I also watched, rewatched um, Prince of Egypt for the first time in years. It's been a long time since I've watched that movie. But what's he have on display? He's got a punching bag and a garbage can. All right, well, nothing really that's my cup of tea except for the plant. Also, a bit of a funny update. Uh, yesterday, Vea booted up the game and decided to play for a bit. And while she was playing, she had gotten so many letters from all the villagers in town for Valentine's Day, including presents from certain villagers. It made me realize how much of a recluse I really am. It made me really sad, actually. I'm just like, oh, they don't like me, which they probably do. But still, it just feels kind of bad, you know? I am nothing but a recluse, making all the m hoarding my, my ill-gotten bells and not spending any time with the people of the town. Big sads. I'll spend more time with them in the future. I'm also gonna need to make a snowman. And this sounds really... The town's really pretty this time of night. Like, it's beautiful. Like, the sunlight hitting the trees looks really nice. Uh, right. Reds. Come on. And shoot. So I guess this mean it'll means it'll just be in town somewhere. Meaning I might as well get started on my money rock search. I'll find it along the way. Let's start from the bottom and work our way up this time, because normally I start from the top and work my way down, but we'll just mix it up today for the sake of, you know, variety. Also, I got weeds to pull. Hey there, Chuck. 
I guess late February would be a good time for these changes to start happening, because once March hits, that's pretty much spring, right? What the heck? Ah, a new gyroid. A mini plinkoid. I think I already have one of those. I can just add it to the basement with the rest of them. My weird gyroid prison in my basement. Hey, Gulliver. How's it going, buddy? Grr. Ah. Grr. Gulliver, wake up. Uh. Uh. What the? Oh, hey. I slipped and fell off the boat again. What I mean to say is, it was pirates or sharks again. Something like that. What do you mean, are you a real sailor? Of course I'm a real sailor. But I'd dress this way if I weren't. Although, it is a pretty cute outfit, isn't it? But that's not why I'm wearing it. I am wearing it because it's a part of a time-honored tradition. We sailors are a proud and noble breed, men of the sea, rough and rugged, with an impeccable fashion sense. But that doesn't enter into it. Oh, so you're sorry now? Forget about it. Put your mind at ease. Yes, let's move on. You saved my life, and I must thank you for saving me. I bartered this off a seedy-looking merchant when I was visiting in a far-off port town. I'm going to find another, another like it anywhere. At least I don't think you will. Thank you. You know, I'm just a rolling stone, never knowing where I'm going. Hmm, wait a second. Maybe that's why I don't swim so well. Anyway, what I'm trying to tell you is... The guys, my shipmates, they think that maybe if they tie me to the mast, I won't fall off the boat so much. So with any luck, maybe I won't be washing up on your beach too often. At least not for a little while. Thanks for the whole saving my life thing. May your sails stay full and your socks stay dry. I remember when my older brother, Bud, uh, saw Gulliver the first time he thought his eyebrows were wounds. He, like, they, he thought that they, that they were damage he had taken by falling overboard. That was kind of funny. On a low-resolution... TV. I, I can see why you'd make that mistake. A Chinese lion. Ooh. That's gonna be interesting. <laughs> lives here? Chevra. Okay. Chevra lives here. That's cool. It's never the first rock. I don't think I've only, I've only had, like, in this entire series, I've only had it be the first rock once. Uh, which... That was impressive and really really nice that first time it happens because I feel like searching for the money rock and hunting for all the fossils in town takes up a significant size of each day's episode. Then again, I'm getting really lucky with these fossil placements today because they're all they all seem to be down at the lower part of town currently. I mean, hey, I found three of them already. Everyone's I think I feel like most of my friends' favorite uh favorite early DreamWorks animated movie is uh, Road to El Dorado, which I can understand. It's fun, it's funny, it's adventurous, it's exciting, and I know a lot of, I know some people whose favorite movie might actually be Jonah, or what, was it Jonah? No, not Jonah, um, Sinbad, Sinbad. Some people's might be Sinbad, like, I know Travis really likes Sinbad. I wasn't crazy about it, I mean, I like the, the attractive goddess lady, but like, I wasn't crazy about Sinbad. Um, I actually, I, I don't know, I've, I feel like I've gained an appreciation for, this is going to sound really bad, I've gained an appreciation for violence in movies as an adult, so when someone gets stuck with a sword, or when I see people fighting with swords and no one's trying to stab each other, that really bothers me, and uh, like, really pulls me out of the movie. Uh, but besides that, I actually really liked, I actually liked Sinbad, I'm not crazy about it, but like, I'd watch it again, no problem. No, my favorite early DreamWorks animated movie is Prince of Egypt, which I mentioned earlier, because, like, I don't know. I, I just find it funny. My friends are just like, oh, man, I like Sinbad because of cool pirate adventures. I like, I like uh, Road to El Dorado because of the good music and, you know, sense of humor. And I'm just like, I like Prince of Egypt because everybody dies. And, like, I was talking to the girlfriend about it. Like, yeah, why am I? I'm the one weirdo in the group who's just like, oh, yeah, Prince of Egypt. I, I like the one where all the children die in the end. That was great. <laughs> just like... I think it's just because I enjoyed it so much as a kid. Heck, I enjoyed it so much that I drove my Bible school my Bible school teacher nuts. Like, every single time we talked about Exodus, I was just like, yeah, man, Prince of Egypt, let's go. And they're just like, no, kid, that was a cartoon. That's not what really happened. And I'm just like, Prince of Egypt. And they're like, no, kid, not Prince of Egypt. And I'm like, but, but why not? <laughs> It's funny. That was a 
that was just the thing that happened a lot when I was like, whenever a, a big cool religious movie came out, like I enjoyed Noah the first time I watched it, but everybody's just like, no, that one's bad. And I'm like, is it? Okay. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun movie. It was weird, that's for sure. Will the sprouts do another money tree? We already have two of them growing in town. There we go, poo poop. Yeah, I enjoyed Noah. I, did, I wasn't crazy about Exodus, Gods, and Kings, but I, it came and it went, you know, it was inoffensive. Passion of Christ? I've never seen it all. But I have no opinion on it. That being said, I was... It doesn't seem like the kind of movie I'd be excited to go see. Meanwhile, like, the story of... The story of, um... Moses and Exodus is, like, really, really fun. Or not fun, I guess, but... It's a journey. It's dramatic. It's got... A lot of interesting characters. I really enjoyed Prince of Egypt. And I enjoyed, uh, I, I heard, I, I remember watching the Old Testament as a kid and really enjoying that movie. The one with Charlton Heston. I heard that one's really good and I remember liking it as a kid, but I've never gone back and tried to watch it since, so I don't know, you know? Um, it's weird that way. Maybe I shouldn't test my nostalgia. You ever think about that? If you like something as a kid, Maybe it's smarter not to ever go back and watch it, because I can't tell you how many things my girlfriend has shown me that she loved as a child, and I just start poking holes in it, because that's what I do when I watch movies. I don't... I, mean, I don't go in with the idea of... Like, that's the thing. People think that people like me who poke holes in movies a lot when they watch them go in looking for plot holes, but no, it's just when you watch enough movies, you kind of become attuned to that kind of thing. There's a lot of the same mistakes, or uh, a lot of issues with movies happen over and over again, so naturally you point those things out. I was thinking about something earlier when I was watching uh, Prince of Egypt. It came up to me, and sometimes when you... You know what's great about finding plot holes? Sometimes they're not holes at all. They're intentional decisions made by... Or they're not intentionals, but like, they're little details that help better immerse you in the story. For instance, there's a huge series of scenes in Prince of Egypt where Moses... Uh, with the help of, or, or where God, represented by Moses, de uh, uh, delivers a plague, an apocalyptic plague of hellfire, of locusts, of toads, and they even turn like the Nile River into blood, and then they kill all the children. But like, God does this, right? In Prince of Egypt. However, uh, during this process, Ramses thinks. Moses is to blame for all this, and there are several scenes where Ramses and Moses talk face to face inside the palace while this apocalyptic event's happening. And I'm just thinking, I thought for a moment, like, why doesn't Ramses just, like, shank Moses? Or, like, because if, if he believes Moses is to blame for all this, he could just kill Moses and get rid of him through his own, you know, logic. However, uh, what, what makes that scene interesting is when you, real, when you think about their relationship, is that they're brothers. Not only are their brothers, but Ramses is trying to live up to the ideals passed down by his father. And so, if he were to just kill this, kill this, you know, enemy of his, rather than properly defeating him, he would feel as though he did not live up to his father's expectations. Anyways, movie reviews aside, Prince of Egypt's great. See it any way that you can. Hey, Red, how's it going? Hey, Will, what have we here? A customer? Don't be so shy. Come on in. Tell me, friend, did you see Crazy Red's Crazy Flyer? Is that what brings you through my door today? That's it, isn't it? It must be, hmm? I knew it. Well, you'll be happy to hear today's your lucky day. I have a selection of fine merchandise that's to die for. To be perfectly honest, an opportunity like this doesn't come along every day. Oh, wait a minute. What am I doing chewing your ear off like this? My apologies. Come on in. Take a look around. See for yourself that Crazy Red's got the goods. Come on, come on. <laughs> Yay. Ah, come in. Come in. Welcome, my friend. Don't you dare rush yourself. Take your time. Make sure you get a good look at my fine wares. Everything here is a rare find. Nothing run to the mill here. It's crazy. <laughs> Red. My man, all I see in here is a table, a kiddie pool, and balloon fight. 
Which I'll, I'm down for balloon fight. I'll buy balloon fight, but I came here for special paintings, man. You don't have none of that on sale? This is all you have? That's rather disappointing, don't you think, Red? But you know something, friend? All is not perfect in Crazy Red's little world. They have some truly disturbed folk out there. Why, just the other day, I heard something so shocking. That dresser I bought off you, it turned out to be nothing more than a cheap piece of junk, you crook. That is what this heartless cad screamed at me. What's up with that, hmm? It's not like Red has ever forced anyone to buy anything. This customer had plenty of time to shop, and he decided to make his purchase without any pressure from me. Discounting your own lack of judgment, and then labeling someone else a swindler? Ridiculous, am I right? Oh, I would never imply that you were such a person. You are a sharp cookie. I can see it in your eyes. So, what's it gonna be? No matter what you choose, you can't lose. It's all good at Crazy Reds. <laughs> I like Crazy Red. Hmm, you have a question? Understand that I can't be too specific. Details can be dangerous beasts, am I right? I have my sources, my special suppliers. Best not to say too much, really. You know, it's not easy bringing the very best of my customers. In fact, it can get a bit dicey from time to time. But my customers, though, to the end of the world and back, that's Crazy Red's tried and true philosophy. I'm the hardest working beast in the business. <laughs> Hold on there, partner. You might be joking, but Old Red ain't a laughing. Better goods, better prices, that's our motto here at Crazy Reds. I'm barely making a profit as it is. What with the rent, the staff, the overhead alone is killing me. That price is rock bottom. Any lower, and I'd be giving it away. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> guy's got a lot of dialogue. Let's just keep talking to him. But you know something, friend. Okay, here we go. There's some truly disturbed folk out there. Da -da 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 -da. All right, that's old dialogue. Do to do. <sighs> Aha, I thought that might catch your eye. The balloon fight. There's no faulting your taste, I tell ya. She's a re real beauty, am I right? Hard to find, too, that one. A rarity among rarities. Drawing collectors like a flame draws moths. Absolutely irresistible. The jewel of my collection. In fact, I had someone who wanted to buy it come in mere moments before you. He might be back soon. I'll tell you what, though. I like you. And I'm gonna let you take it home for only 12,000 bells. You must have cast some sign of spell over me. Because I'm practically giving this away. So, what do you say? Well, I don't have the money, man. I'll be back, though. Oh, really? How disappointing. Well, keep on browsing. There's plenty left to see. All right, well, I'll be back, Red, because I'm going to buy that balloon fight. Look out. I want to see if it works. Uh, it's going to be funny if it doesn't work, because, one, it might just be a bad item, like a cheap knockoff. Uh, but on the other hand, it might be <laughs> just busted because of the emulation, and that'd be really funny. But that's not... I know that's not intentional. Anyway, let's, uh... Let's keep looking for that money rock. Once we find it, we'll come back to Red's. Du, 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 du. Du, du. I really like doing his voice. That was really fun. I really encourage everyone to try a bit of voice acting. Just, next time you're playing a game that it wants you to read and no one's home, read it out loud. Think about what crazy voices you can come up with the, come up for with the character. Really put thought into the, their personality and how their voice reflects them, you know? A good voice can take a character who has almost no personality and really give a lot to them, you know? It's important. Like, uh, I know one of the reasons, one of the reasons I enjoyed the early game of Final Fantasy XIV so much is when I, is because I streamed it, and I did a lot of funny voices for the stream to keep the chat entertained. I really do enjoy, I really do enjoy doing voices. It just gets difficult to do when, uh, other people join the, just join the, um, excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. It gets just, it just gets hard to do when other people are on stream with me because I just start to cringe and feel bad. Like, I start to get 
uncomfortable, you know? Like, on, like, oh my god, I'm making a fool of myself, right? But, um... But when I'm on my own, and there may or may not some be someone in chat, I really do have a great time doing the voices, and I, I would like some feedbacks. I would like to improve at it. Uh, I do a lot of role-playing with D&D, and games like D&D and Cyberpunk Red, so... Like, knowing when my voices are good or help embody the character. My goal is to not sound like myself. That's always my goal. To sound as different from me as possible. Gotcha. Man, don't tell Crazy Red about the money rock. Yep. Getting paid. Pop. Pop. Sometimes I'll lose a voice, sometimes I'll start- almost always I'll start with a voice, and then I will sh like, that I have to struggle to kind of do, and then I'll shift into something more comfortable over time. So, uh, for instance, uh, I'm trying to think of a recent example. The recent example is that I wanted to do a- I wanted to do, like, a Bane voice for- I can't do a Bane voice right now, sorry. Uh, I'm trying to think of a recent example. I guess the good example would be Crazy Red, where I went- hard Brooklyn at first, and then it eased up over time into something that I was more comfortable with. And that happens a lot with a lot of voices I do. Or that I try to do. I feel like if there's a creative medium you can engage with and take joy in, you should give it a try. Pick up a book, sing a song, you know? Record yourself and listen to yourself back, because... Well, that's the kind of thing you can grow and get better at, and no one can ever take it from you, you know? Like, if you get a really good job, or you find someone you really like, or you play a game that you really enjoy, like, that can all be taken away from you one, one way or another, but the skills you develop, those are especially difficult to be taken from you, you know? And you should try and develop skills and just different things like that. Like, I don't know. Just if you suddenly have a desire to draw one day, start drawing. Um, if you have fun doing it, keep doing it. Anything that you do naturally, that like and that, there's that, that was the thing that happened to me as a kid. I did a lot of different art, artistic things naturally, and as I was grown up, I was pressured out of it by people around me saying that it was bad, or like my parents, or my school, or my school telling me I need to focus on my homework and on important things that mattered. But now that I'm an adult, those important things that mattered haven't done me a lick of good, and I really regret losing those skills. Like, I wish that I would have kept trying at singing, or I wish that I would have kept trying at drawing. And so now, whenever I find something like that, like doing funny voices or streaming, um, I hold on to it. Because I know that once I develop it, it cannot be taken away from me. Unless I let it be taken away from me. If I was a smart kid, I would have kept drawing in my notebook at school. I would have kept writing what I wanted to write, no matter what people said or how cringy I thought it was. But, alas... I listened to my grown- I listened to grown-ups and, well, it didn't go well. I'm putting him right here. I like him. Wow. That's cool. I'm selling it. <laughs> Alright, let's head downstairs, grab that, uh, and grab some letters real quick so I can send off these fossils. Grab the neat paper, and we'll just, we'll do what we can with it, and we're gonna write four letters as always. Do -do -do. Shoot, I ended up writing a letter to Vey on accident. Like that'd be nice, right? It was an accident, but let's make it a happy accident. Anyway, yeah, just I saw this really good post where it's just like, uh, it's just this 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 kid drawing, and then it's a parent who runs up and goes, "Stop drawing. Focus on your focus on your work. Focus on your homework. Stop doing this thing you're naturally driven to do. Focus on 
the, you know, this other thing I think is important, and then it's just like the person is now like overweight and just slouching in a chair browsing Twitter, and the person's just like, why don't you ever do anything? And it's like, well, because you basically bullied him out of it. You took something that he was passionate about and made it painful. And you just suck that joy right out of your child. I don't know. Kind of messed up how we, um... Sorry, I turned my light on. I'm just li sitting here in the dark, arranging my gyroids... my gyroid prisoners. Oh, you're awful. You're just terrible. You are... gosh. Anyway, sorry. I'm just sitting here arranging my gyroid prisoners, talking about the cruelty of reality. Good lord, I'm sorry, guys. Let's remove the simple paper. There we go. Now we'll write two more letters. Just kind of messed up, you know, that, like, as adults, we really suffer for the... Like, as children, the choices we make do so much damage to us as adults. Like, or they change so much in adulthood. And I feel like we should be better safeguarded than that, you know? Like, kids make dumb decisions. We should give them a certain amount of leeway to making those dumb decisions. And I don't think kids are given enough leeway to make dumb decisions. They're, expect they're expected to behave like adults way too early on, and they... Because of that, they... The ones who, you know, live free and easy when they reach adulthood, they've... Unless they've gotten very lucky, they've ruined their lives, and the ones that, you know, live like adults as a child, they reach adulthood pent up and frustrated that they were never able to experience certain things in life. I don't know. Be a kid for as long as you can possibly be one. That's what I think you should do. And things you do as a kid may be bad, they may, be seem, they may seem wrong, but eventually you'll bounce back. And don't be afraid to break a few bones because you're squishy and the bones won't break as easy and they heal way faster. When you're older, you break that same bone and then you know what? It's gonna take months, years even to heal. It may never heal fully, but as a kid, you can make mistakes. And you should make a lot of mistakes as a kid, because that means you'll learn a lot more when you're an adult. That's what Alex thinks. I might be wrong? Who cares? <laughs> Come on. Come on, I went in red. Yeah, I am buying something. I'm coming in here to buy Balloon Fight. Please move, creepy pink mouse with a nice face. Resolu with a good face resolution. Ah, come in, come in. Welcome, my friend. Don't you dare rush yourself. Take your time. Make sure you get a good look at my fine wares. Everything here is a rare find. Nothing run-of-the-mill here. It's crazy. <laughs> All right. No one's watching today but the bots. That's cool. Hey, viewers of the future, how's it going? Ah, that balloon fight caught your eye. Yeah, I will. Yep. Well now, quite magnanimous of you, of you, my friend. Thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm, hmm. Exactly 12,000 bells. You have my thanks. I'll be back with some more rare and unique items. I hope to do business with you again. Heck yeah, balloon fight. Let's go home and play balloon fight, guys. I bet you it's going to look horrific like last time. I hope I honestly, I know that one of the ways you get paintings is from red, and I need to make sure to see him every time because if I'm going to re reach my goal end goal of fully upgrading the museum, fully upgrading my house, and fully upgrading nooks, I definitely I definitely need to be on top of that. But yeah, things are pretty much over right now. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and this is gonna be a shorter episode. I got a lot going on right now in life, but. I hope you guys still enjoy it. I hope this makes it more watchable for you. I know there are people out there that see a long YouTube video and just go, ooh, I don't got time for that. I mean, I love it. I love long YouTube videos because it just means like I have something fun to watch for the next hour and a half. And that's usually nice, especially when I'm doing like a, a boring task, especially if it's an auditory video, you know, where it's mostly just talking. I really appreciate that. Um, I got to go sell, uh, I got to go sell, um, shoot. Anyway, I, I gotta run to Nooks and sell that rocket next to my login. Log on. <sighs>
Bump. Bump, bump. Welcome. How can I help you? How can I help you? Uh, let's make a deposit. So, I see. So you wanted to pay off your debts, Mr. Nook? You still owe 112,236 bells. How much would you like to pay back? That means you still owe 101,736 bells. Thank you very much. Is there anything else I can do for you? Let's, uh, let's mail some letters. Then. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. It was a nice change of pace to play at night for once, you know? Or play towards, uh, the, play in the evening for once, because I've been mostly playing during the early mornings where Nux opens up. I feel like to do everything in Animal Crossing, you need to do a small amount of time traveling, even though it's frowned upon. I, um, I only do it when I absolutely need to, but it uh, to each their own, really. I, and there are drawbacks, and the game does account for time traveling, in the case of uh, turnips and uh, weeds. I know turnips sour immediately if your if your clock gets messed up. Or at least I, I I remember. I think that's you know what I think turnips sour immediately if you uh, mess with your clock. I think my excite bike's still downstairs, so we're gonna go ahead and just take that down to the basement next to. Uh, is the excite bike still here? It is. It is in the corner. All right, we're gonna drop off. It. Gonna drop off balloon fight right here. No, let's drop off the rocket because I don't need the rocket. We're just gonna leave that there for now and sell it all in one day. Like we did last time. Drop. Alright, balloon fight, let's go. I enjoyed this game a lot as a kid. I'll play, yes. Press the L button, L button, R button, and the Z button. All at once we're playing your NES. Come on, please work. Oh. I think I was sold a defective console by Crazy Red. <laughs> oh man. It's still playable. If you can call that, if you can call this playable. I guess this is playable. I mean, I can kind of see what's going on. I can't read anything. Oh no, I got got. Shoot. He's gonna fall in the water. Haha. Haha. Balloon fight! Oh, this is hard on my eyes. I destroyed one of my balloons. Heck you. Get hacked. Bum, bum, bum. It's still fun even when it's just no graphics. Good old Balloon Fight, yeah? This is one of my favorite- honestly, this is one of my favorite NES games. I adore Balloon Fight. I played this so much with my brother in this game. I, I will see about getting these running properly. Because I do want to do an episode where I just play uh, Excite Bike and Balloon Fight in the other NES games. Anyway. That's enough. That's enough, uh... Balloon Fight for now. Mm. Yep. Alright. Also, I saw- I noticed that, uh, what's her name? Velma. When Velma introduced me to the game, when I logged in, she was wearing uh, she was wearing my monkey shirt. That was pretty cool. I really like the monkey shirt. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to leave us be sure to subscribe, leave a like down below, and uh, leave a letter down in the comments. Tell me, uh, hmm, tell me just anything. I don't have a writing prompt this week. I haven't. I don't have the structure in the series currently to ask for writing prompts. But yeah, tell me what you guys are thinking about the series so far. What you want me to do. What you want me not to do. Just give me some feedback. Tell me how your day's going. Whatever gets you to leave a comment down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. 
Also, if you really want to see more from me, there's other places you can go too. For example, TikTok. On TikTok, Twitter, and Tumblr, I upload clips daily of my live streams, which are going to be on twitch.tv slash lodge of the cat. So if you missed those, don't worry, but be sure to give, leave a follow there just in case you might catch one sometime. Also, if you want to join my community, hang out sometime and just have a chat. Maybe there's some questions you want to ask me based on these videos, or if you just want to talk to me or my, any of my friends that you see on Lodge of the Cat, be sure to join the Discord. Thank you all very much for what- oh shoot, heck. Looks like Vea hasn't bought any furniture yet. Thank you all very much for watching, and have a good night.